This is Tom Black here. Today I'm going over how to become a podiatrist. I know this confuses some people watching on YouTube. Is a podiatrist an MD? Are they a DO? We're gonna go over all the details and we're starting now. I absolutely love being a podiatrist. It lets me work with a lot of patients. I do a ton of procedures. I do a ton of surgeries. There is a ton of demand. If anything, I am overworked and I cannot keep up with the patients. Like anything in healthcare, it's frustrating. The healthcare system is no doubt broken, whether you're an MD, DO, podiatrist. We get a license called a DPM, which is called the Doctor of Podiatric Medicine. We still go to medical school. We still do a residency. We still do surgical training but we do work in hospitals, we do work in clinics. I'll go over the statistics at the end. But essentially, if you're a younger person looking for a career, if you're in the Michigan area, I'd love for you to reach out to me on the website. You can come shadow me, you can come work with me. But I have found it to be an extremely rewarding position and I love doing what I do. I love seeing my patients, it's just so exciting. But step one, obtain a bachelor's degree. The first step to becoming a podiatrist is you have to go to college, you have to complete your degree. I completed mine in biochemistry and I did a biochemistry master's degree as well. And I played football at the University of Windsor. I went to the University of Memphis for an undergraduate degree. And then number two, complete prerequisite courses. So according to the College of Podiatric Medicine, you must do about 90 semester hours, including biology, chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, and English is required. And then you should probably go shadow somebody. So again, if you're in Michigan, come see me. But in every state, there's a ton of podiatrists. I think there's 11,000 practicing podiatrists in the United States and across the world too. In Europe, in Australia, and then there's the MCAT test. So the medical college admission test, just like for an MD or a DO school, we take the same type of exams to get in and then apply to a podiatric medical school. Now, I believe every single podiatric medical school is combined with an MD or DO medical school. And the first couple of years are the same, but then when you go off on rotations in the hospital, that's kind of when the future tests differ. Now, at the same time, there's slightly different specialized board exams that MD, DO, and doctor of podiatric medicine do slightly different exams. We don't do psychiatry and we don't do a gynecology rotation, for example, although I think that might be changing in the future. And then you complete a doctor of podiatric medicine degree. And then you go to a residency program. I, for example, did mine in Ann Arbor. I did a three-year forefoot and rear foot surgical residency training. So I did a lot of bunion surgery, hammer toe surgery, broken ankles, foot amputations, toe amputations, a lot of skin grafting, a lot of wound care, a lot of orthotics a lot of biopsies, a lot of dermatology. That's usually where we focus, a lot of diabetes care, a lot of vascular care. And then I went down to the University of Texas, I did a further fellowship training, and I did a traveling fellowship at the University of Texas. That was a great experience. And then I trained with some other doctors in the Midwest, completing traveling fellowships with them in diabetes, reconstruction, nerve surgery. So there's a lot of ways to go. There's other people who do sports medicine. There's a lot of people that do ankle replacements, ankle fractures. There's even a program in Florida that does complete limb reconstruction, lengthening for excised tumors, limb length disorders. That's a little bit more advanced than what I do. And then when you complete your residency, you obtain your state license. The government charges you a ton of money and you have to get your licenses to distribute medications, pain medications. Then there's also board certification. I've completed multiple board certifications. I've completed my podiatric medicine with the ABPM and I've completed my surgical board certifications with the ABFAS. So that's the American Board of Foot and Ankle Surgery. Essentially, I can do surgery, I can practice podiatric medicine, I can get on staff at hospitals. And there's a lot more training you can do. You could do wound care. I did have a wound care one in the past. I got sick and tired of paying just so much money for all these different certifications. I personally love podiatry and listen, I'm an optimistic person. I'm not gonna get into the negatives of going into medicine. Yes, the system is broken and I hate the cost associated with it. I personally believe that healthcare should be between me, the doctor, and you, the patient, not 20 administrators. So if you're the patient here, there's 20 administrators with us trying to do pre-authorizations, 
charging you hidden fees, doing all this kind of crazy stuff. So I'm gonna ignore all that stuff. 12 reasons to be optimistic about the future of podiatry. It's actually rated as the 10th best paying job in the United States, according to the World Report in 2024. Number two, it's rated in the top 20 jobs overall in the US News and World Report. Number three is there is enough slots for great candidates, especially for residency too. So if you wanna do surgery, if you wanna do other things, there's slots available. Number four, there's world-class fellowship directors and residency programs all across the United States. And the big thing is number five, there is never a shortage of patients. I promise you that. People who have diabetes, people who have ingrown toenails, there is just so much demand everywhere. Yes, healthcare is getting more difficult to start a practice. Insurance companies are brutal, but there is always gonna be somebody who's willing to hire you. And I think that's only getting more in demand. Number six, there's lots of niches. Podiatry has a lot of focuses, sports medicine, surgery, toenail care. Number seven, an opportunity to make a big difference. I see so many patients that need help with care. I feel like I make such a big difference every day, even doing simple stuff, wounds, ingrown toenails, infections, diabetic wounds. This is stuff that other professions cannot or do not help out with. The healthcare system needs more great healthcare practitioners. It is hard, but it is so rewarding. Number eight, a variety of work environments. You could do home care on your own schedule. You can work in the clinic. You can work at a VA hospital. You can work in the hospital. You could do surgery. Number nine, there's great balance. Me, I'm having my fourth kid right now, and I can actually work on my own schedule to go see some home care patients as needed when my kid's born, or I could not go at all and reschedule. Number 10, potential for good work-life balance. I saw a statistic that podiatrists behind like preachers in the United States had the lowest divorce rates. Hey, I know that's true for me. Number 11, competitive salaries, potential for growth. In healthcare, there's a lot of room to move up. Number 12, the little things from the patients. Even the messages I get in this YouTube video. I thank you guys so much. Knowing that I am able to help people with significant health conditions, it is so rewarding. And I am so humble and so grateful every day that I have chosen this amazing profession. So you, the viewers, thank you so much. If you need anything else, feel free to message me through the website. If you're a prospective student, I always love students coming to work with me and I will gladly answer any questions. Thank you.